Hi and welcome to Add More Zest. My name's Rebecca, also known as 4Kids at 147, and I'm back working on my Dreamer designs. It is close to getting finished, but I think you guys have seen most of the last sections of this diamond painting come together. Um, it has I've just not had much time to diamond paint um, on my normal. I did have some time earlier on in the week. Um, okay, my multi-placing is not liking multi-placing today. So let's just go for standard. Uh, I have uncovered a really, really big section. So I'm going to try to zoom in. I am on a little bit of a weird angle, but that's to make sure that I can still have my case on my desk um, so that I can actually grab all the colours. Um, but yeah, I did have chance to work on, uh, get little bits of diamond painting in. A few times this week it's actually been quite later evening should I say rather than early evening before I got to diamond paint so I have actually completed um, a couple more of my paint gem mystery two paintings so they're quite a bit bigger it's only a set of four so for a couple of evenings I actually did one of those each evening because it was say it was quite late on it was like, okay, let's get some of this done so that I have, you know, sort of finished something. Um, and they were just the right, just the right size for me to get some done um, and still get to bed at a half decent time. So I finished those. I then did have an evening where I was able to sort of think about getting out one of my bigger paintings. Um, and I actually really wanted to work on my Diamond Art Club mystery painting. So because it's been quite a while since I've worked on any of my big paintings, apart from this one during Whip and Waffles, I decided to allow myself to work on my Diamond Art Club mystery painting um, and not spin the decision wheel. So I did some of that. But then last night, I actually started diamond painting a little bit before seven, I think it was. So I decided to spin the decision wheel. Now on my decision wheel, I do have my three current large paintings. Uh, and I also have the paint gem mini sets on there as well. And it shows a paint gem mini. So I thought, okay, let's do a paint gem mini. So I did a small one. And then it was like, okay, there's still plenty of time. It only took me 30, 40 minutes. Still plenty of time to get out a big painting. Spun it again. It chose Paint Gem Mini again. So I did another Paint Gem Mini. Still had time that if I got out a big painting, I'd be able to, you know, get a, a section done. I say they don't take too long. Um, and it was, you know, a weekend night as such. What's a weekend night? Friday or Saturday night? I'm filming this on Saturday, so it's Friday night, still a weekend night. So, you know, no big dramas if I'm up a bit later. Spun the wheel again, it picked Paint Gem Mini yet again. Uh, so I finished a third one at about... I want to say it was about half past eight. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll spin the wheel again. And if it picks one again, then, you know, I still have time to do a section, albeit a smaller one, of one of my big paintings. And my decision wheel pick Paint Gemini again. Four times on the bounce. <laughs> it picked Paint Gem Mini. So I was like, okay then, it's a Paint Gem Mini kind of evening. So I actually ended up doing a couple more. Um, I didn't spin the decision wheel 
um, for the last ones because, it, you know, it was at the point where it was like, do I want to diamond paint for half an hour more or not? And if the answer was yes, well, it was, I may as well do a paint gem mini. <laughs> so today we are working on my dreamer designs because i'm on the last part i like to do two sections up so i feel like there's some level of completion going on as i move along um and i may or may not probably will not uh when it comes to the likes of this symbol zero i may not do all that's over here i may just do a little bit according to what's in my tray uh, on the basis that I may want to cover this back up again depending on how far we get across. So I'm going to work primarily upwards uh, and go go through the next few but yeah it, uh, it kind of made me chuckle every time the decision wheel again decided to pick Paint Gem Mini I was like okay you're telling me something today so paint gem mini it was so i got a few done which was nice uh, i finished my mystery set as i say earlier on in the week uh, but i didn't i did a few of other ones but i didn't finish any more sets do i have any more of this this is the only thing when i pull out a big section I'm also using one of our uh, September launch trays that were recently, the colours were recently announced on social media. You did get a sneaky one of them a couple of weeks ago of the blue one, uh, but they've been announced on social media. So I did decide to use the beige one today. Uh, we did this a while ago in a zesty size um, and I actually use this one quite a bit and I've just tipped out the wrong colour. It's this slash symbol and because I'm working on an angle I've tipped out the wrong one and I actually don't need this one at all. Okay so let's start that again. It's gonna be one of those days uh, but yeah it's a brand new um, print. It's in fact not that long off a printer so it does take just a little bit for the drills to move quite as freely as some of my more weathered in trays. Um, but we will, we will keep going. Every now and then I just have to nudge some diamonds into the pot um, just while, you know, the process of the 3D printing calms itself down on the tray itself right do i have any more of those my lights are brighter oh there's loads here uh my lights are brighter and sometimes i do just need to tilt my head at a weird angle just to check for those colors that float about so i don't miss any Anyway, I have lots and lots of comments and questions to get through, so I may personally go and grab a brew during this whip and waffle, but my aim is to have a longer whip and waffle today and see if I can get fully caught up on comments. Last weekend was our August launch, um, which I appreciate all of your guys' support. Um, but it was a busy weekend, uh, so I'm hoping to get a bit of a longer whip and waffle in today and get caught up a little bit more on your guys' comments uh, now that I have a little bit more time. Uh, also, uh, you can very much start getting excited about Advent as well. So just a little update, we have been releasing sneaky peeks for our September launch, which is our big launch over on social media and, you know, a few little sneak peeks into this whip and waffle. Um, but yeah, we September, we are launching a diamond painting for our YouTube Advent event, which is where I diamond paint every day from the 1st to the 24th 
of December and get a little bit of me time in. Um, what was I saying? Yes, but so because we do release the diamond painting uh, on the 8th of September, um, I need the space basically in my house to be able to cope with the painting, of course, with the diamond painting coming in and be able to get those prepped. So we've been busy packing the 24 day advent calendar for the last few weeks and we were planning to start shipping those the last week in August slash beginning of September um, but we have decided to bring that forward by a week because we want the space to be able to bring in the diamond paintings and start prepping those um, so we figured a week earlier wouldn't make as much difference to you guys in relation to temptation um, and hiding the 24 day advent so that you don't open it before the 1st of December but it would make a big difference to us in relation to space and being able to have that little bit more time to also prep the diamond paintings. So we're gonna start sending out the first wave of advent pre-orders um, from Monday. I have spoken to our post office carrier and they're actually a little bit short staffed at the moment. Um, and the person who does the transport management is currently on holiday um, and he's the he's the one that normally sort of sorts out logistics of everything. So I did ask them if we were best, you know, arranging in effect an extra van and getting them all ready for postage on one day and getting them to come and pick them all up at once. But because the guy who normally arranges all of that is currently in America, I think. Um, because he's currently in America, they have advised that while he can sort it when he gets back, um, because they are also short-staffed, I'm probably best just sending them a few extra mail bags each and every day. Um, so that is the plan. They're quite big boxes. I haven't yet established how many I can fit into a mailbag, uh, but we plan on sending a couple of extra mailbags with our normal pickup every day. So we're going to start sending those from Monday. Um, so keep an eye on your inbox for your dispatch notifications. Get yourselves ready to pop your advent calendar away in a safe place where you know or tell somebody else so that you don't open it. Um, and yeah, they should start arriving with you over the next few weeks. We're gonna work in order um, to which they were ordered. So you may see a, a, an occasional shuffle um, so you may find that, for example, somebody who, somebody whose order number is before your, after yours has actually been shipped before, that would only be um, getting a fair split of international and UK. Again, just the mailbags, filling up a mailbag um, for the postie because that type of mail is split, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we are... We are shipping out Advent next week. Uh, we still have more to actually put together. Um, and that includes some pre-orders. So things then may slow down a little bit, but they'll still keep going out on a regular basis. I've just knocked the whole pot. Didn't I tell you this is a sign of the way the day is going to go for me today? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Okay. Let's see if we can get 
some diamonds on here and some questions answered. This is definitely going to be a long one. We're 14 minutes in and I have I have yet to answer a question. I've been too busy giving you updates. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for dispatch notifications from Monday. We have a huge tower of boxes uh, and it'll be quite nice to see those going to their new home. It's the whole game of what people have paid for it and pre-ordered it, so we want them out as soon as possible. But we also, you know, don't want the temptation for people to be too much. But I suppose if people are going to have temptation to open it early, whether they receive it at the end of August or the beginning of September, isn't really going to make much difference. And we have no way to make the post office hold on to them and only deliver them on the 31st, 30th of November. Otherwise, we'd do that to help you all out. We'd tell the post office to hold it and do it sort of as a guaranteed delivery date, but we just can't take that risk. We just want them to to be safe with you guys and <coughs> your responsibility. To For some reason, my... Oh, that's why. Mega Sorry, let's try that. I'm not sure if... Something has changed. No, hang on. Okay, let's try that. Sorry, messing about with my camera. Megan has been using my camera to take photographs for the website. And something changed on my settings. Um, and they've been set the same way they've been set for so long. I wasn't sure what it was that had been changed, but it set my memory card to start saving at like 16 minutes. So I think I figured out what it is she's changed and I think I've changed it back. We shall see. This video is now a test as to whether the settings have been saved. Anyway, let me stop waffling about what is going on in the background though it will probably come up again. Um, and let's get on to comments and things that have been left on previous Sunday Whip and Waffles. So Crystal does say in relation to me using um, the sort of tealy blue tray, she says she knew she saw a new colour on one of the printers. So there has been a few behind the scenes shots posted on Facebook and she I spied a new colour. Uh, she says she thinks she's guessed what the diamond painting is for September, uh, but not the picture yet. Ooh. Well, all will be revealed soon. We have started revealing, as I say, September's launch items. So you guys know what's coming rather excited over a few. Uh, she says she loves a HP source and so do her kids. She says they are an ex-army family uh, so they have friends from different countries and they used to love trying different food from their home country uh, and of course when they went to the PX which is on post stores, uh, they would always go to a store that sold food from different countries and they would try something new every time. Uh, they love Walker's Crisps chips, she calls them Walker's chips, which is Walker's Crisps to us UK lot. They are a good crisp. Um, and they order them a few times a year, a few times a year. They also said they love Aero bars. They are nice. Mint Aero, normal Aero. Uh, she says, have a fun and productive uh, week packing advent. Thank you. We did have a very productive week. Um, we got to over half of the total amount of advent 
being packed um, and we need to we need to pack quite a few more to meet the pre-orders but I say we're going to start shipping out and we're still going to be packing as well so by the time we get to the end of the ones already packed we should have more packed ready uh, so that the pre-orders just keep flowing out of the house is the idea and the post office or the postie that collects our mail doesn't get too bombarded um, with everything. Uh, Carol says thank you for convincing me to use glue dots. Uh, she said she was so fed up with everything else um, she had to load her pen every like 20 minutes. She says the glue dots went strong all day today um, and she predicts that they will go much longer. Yes, they do really, really well. Uh, Jackie, or Blossom Chops, uh, has said she's got glue dots and glue strips in her pen. Uh, that she's been using for months. She says every so often they lose their stickiness, so she pulls them out, rolls them around in her finger and pops them and replaces them. She says they obviously need a little bit of priming again because, you know, they've been put back to their sticky side. So you may find you have to dab it on your skin and things for a while. Um, she says, but they're ready to go again for a good while after that. That's the one thing I haven't tried and I'm very tempted to actually try it now. Let's just go for it. So I have putty in this multi-placer at the moment. And as you saw, um, it, it was picking up two diamonds and no more. Now, it might not like having glue strips put in this multiplacer after it having putty in there. And yes, I'm still using metal tweezers in metal tips and no, it's not recommended. But you know what? Call me a rebel. It's just so much easier and they're just handy. So do so at your own risk. I've not damaged any yet. Um, but I'm not going to say if you cause any damage that I'll fix it. <laughs> is the easiest way to say it. If you cause any damage, it is at your own risk. But let's see if I can get... This putty has been in here for quite a while. Rather than replacing my multi-placer with a fresh one, I'm going to just try and get as much of this putty out as possible. I'm trying to use the other putty to get it out a bit like, a bit like you do when you're trying to get blue tack off something. Dab, dab, dab. Okay, that's looking pretty clear. I've been saying for a couple of weeks now that I am gonna try the glue strips and I just haven't got around to it or I've thought about it when I've been sat down for the evening and therefore I've not done it. So I was advised to sort of cut double the length-ish. So let's cut just over that because I didn't quite fold it to the right length. And then, now I have stuck them onto each other. Let's see if I can get it off off the backing. Come on, let's not make a hash of this. I know we're having a bad day on camera today, but let's let's still try and work. It's sticking to each other more than it wants to come off the backing paper. There we go. Okay, so I've got it all off the backing paper. I'm going to roll it, squish it into sort of a dot and then try and roll it out, stretch it out. Let's give this a go. Squeeze it into my, I could probably do this a whole lot neater. 
I've still got some putty around the outside of my multi-placer. But they do say, or they have told me, um, Jackie who asked for the glue strips has told me that they are much better and much easier. I've just used my scissors, again, metal on metal, probably shouldn't, just to chop off the bit that is sticking out the end a little bit too much. I've popped that on my paper that's left out over there. Okay, let's tip some more of the number three in. Let's give this a go. I've got quite a few that are stuck together of these diamonds, so that could be entertaining. But let's give this a go. <gasps> well, let's pick them up. Is it too sticky? Is it left? Oh no, it's put them down again. That's always a good sign. Oh, we might be back to multi-placing. And as long as I have cut off the excess, correctly which I've done the same way I sort of do it with um, the same way that I do it with my original glue dots if I've not you know sort of got them pressed into the pen properly I do sometimes need to cut off the excess it really depends on how I've got them shoved into the pen for the first time um, and this time, I say, I've got no practice. It's the first time I've used the glue strips. It's the first time I've got round to using the glue strips, which is quite bad considering we've been selling them for a couple of months now. But I say, we do listen to what you guys want, even if they're not already things that we use. We get in the things that you guys want and then eventually get round to trying them ourselves. <laughs> And that's what I've just done. I am working on the edge of the canvas. So it is, it does get pulled up occasionally with the force of the diamonds and stuff going down. But oh, I like this. I like to glue strips. They're easier to fit in than glue dots. Um, because glue dots, of course, are already in sort of a circle and you have to use multiples of them. Might need a little bit more priming, but it's actually not done, not doing too bad. It is, it is quite sticky. It is yanking the canvas up as I take them off. Uh, but I'm often very light pressure with multi-placing tend to be a bit harder at hand with the single placing. <coughs> oh, me likes that. Okay, I've finally got my four placer with glue strips in. I'm probably going to be a very happy bunny going forward. So the putty was nice. It's worked well for quite a long time. Um, I actually had Abby's putty in it and it say it's worked really well for quite a long time, but then it does get to sort of a point and where you need to replace it uh, but you can't just top it up you sort of need to take the whole thing out and then pop it back in so while it was at that point anyway we'll try glue strips okay all the threes are done there i've got a few over here but not too many so we will do those Get these ones added in the only thing with me using oh we've actually got quite a few uh, the only thing with me using glue strips in my multi-placer and not putty is the ab diamonds i would not like to place the ab's with glue dots especially without it being well used so maybe quite a while down the track I'd be happy to use um, this multi-placer to do ABs once I've used it for regular diamonds for quite a while and it's a lot less sticky. Glue dots right at the beginning can sometimes be a little bit harsh for ABs. <coughs> but 
that's fine. I will single place the ABs. I'm getting myself stuck on the canvas because I've pulled up so much. But I know this is going to be a long whip and waffle. So I figured let's have as much open space as we can potentially use. Anyway, two questions down. <laughs> Yvette says, hi Rebecca, she says, great whip and waffle as usual, as always. She says, she is very intrigued as to what batch cooking Megan is doing. She says she can't wait for the launch video, and this was for the August launch video, um, to see what, see the new colour. She says, while Jay is excited as your launch video is on his birthday, um, along with him being able to get all his birthday goodies. Uh, mostly, his birthday goodies are to do with diamond art. Uh, not that you couldn't guess that, she said. <laughs> have a great day. Thank you, Yvette. And I know Jay did have a fantastic birthday. And I hope he got everything he wanted, though I'm sure his wish list um, has grown since then, too. Um, no doubt about that one. Um, the batch cooking that Megan did, it was pr primarily the batch stuff was slow cooker meals. Um, not all slow cooker meals, but there was a few of them. Uh, and she has some really big um, Ziploc bags that we got. Uh, they're actually from Ikea. So that they will hold like a meal for six. Um, and a lot of it involved, some of the slow cooker recipes require you to sort of cook the meat first. Some of them do. Some of them don't or brown something off. Um, so she would do that. Then she would add all the other ingredients that go into the slow cooker, um, apart from maybe something that goes in half an hour before you serve it. Um, she added in all the main ingredients into the bag and then has popped them in the freezer. So we can just grab a bag out um, bob it in the slow cooker and then add to it later uh, if need be or just take it out and serve it. We have had a couple of them um, during our sort of advent prep. Um, the rest actually it's worked out that Megan is going to keep hold of them or they're going to stay in the freezer uh, until she is until when she goes back to work. So when she goes back to work and back to school, um, the beginning of September, that first half term, and in fact the second half term, so up until Christmas, is quite hard on teachers, to be fair. Um, it's a very, very busy time in sort of their year calendar. The first half term, you know, go from September until like October, November. Um, it is, of course, new children or, you know, children they may have known but haven't taught before. So, you know, teachers have to get used to them and all the rest of it. And of course, there's the new classes coming in. Um, so all of that, it's, you know, getting the kids settled back into a routine. So, you know, they'll all sit down and be calmer after having summer holidays um, and all that that entails. So yeah, it's it's quite a heavy in effect half term for teachers. It can it can take it out of them. It takes it out of them when they get home. They're they're more exhausted than they are um, at other times of the school year. Um, so, yeah, she's keeping hold of some of them for that. We've actually changed up the way that we're packing the advent just a little bit because, of course, there is a lot of general keeping the shop running, keeping YouTube running, all that sort of stuff that also needs doing each and every day. Um, so we now are doing it that we... Megan starts preparing the kitchen 
for Advent in the morning while I am packing any daily orders, dealing with any daily emails, you know, sort of the initial, making sure orders go out, customer queries are contacted, you know, any supplies are ordered, all that sort of stuff. Um, then I help her prep in because the prep work actually takes quite a while. Then we both pack Advent. We now do it as sort of a two team thing. Uh, we both pack the day's quotation quota of Advent, which is normally doing about 25 a day. Um, we both pack those. And then we both, um, once that's finished, we both go doing the other things that need doing. So I work primarily on restocking um, items in the shop that need doing, restocking the shelves. Um, everything seems to have run out at once because if we've done a few weeks of Advent and just on the basics in the shop. So there's a lot of things that need restocking. Um, Megan works on all the mad ideas that I keep coming up with of things that we want to do. Uh, and of course we discuss them while I'm restocking as well. Um, so yeah, she's actually keeping quite a bit of the slow cooker things for first time, for the first half term back at work. Uh, and then the second half term is, of course, all come, lead up to Christmas. So you've got all the Christmas plays and all the all the Christmas things that school do do for kids uh, is all in that second half term. So um, because we've been doing the Advent together and getting it all done, uh, there's been plenty of time for the kitchen to be clean enough for. Um, tea to be cooked rather than thrown in the slow cooker and ignored okay I think I've got all of those I just did that one it was it was a sneaky one it was on its own doesn't look much of a different color to the last one that I did but there is definitely a very slight difference where did I put the pot <laughs> I put the pot to the left of my painting and didn't put it back in my case what am I like Right. Anyway, that went off on a tangent. Uh, went off on a little bit of a tangent there, so you know what I do, how we're doing Advent during the day. I did do a video when we first set up the Advent, explaining how it's set up, which I'll show after Christmas. Um, I do need to do another one, sort of an update to how we now sort of finally work. Uh, and the rhythm that we've got ourselves in but it's good to get a rhythm um, and a few little fail safes in there to make sure that everybody gets everything in their advent right have I got any more number sevens I've just tipped out a load of number sevens and I actually don't think I need that many two down here I see what I think is a lot here and assume that there's a lot over here but of course this is changing quite a bit in the pattern okay we're on to the AB let's get the AB set up get my little wax pen and let's do some single placing and get some questions answered um Sarah she says hi Rebecca she says okay she says she is totally on board with a bacon butty she says it sounds amazing and she says she guesses she needs to book a flight soon <laughs> uh, I can't believe that like most other countries don't find a bacon butty normal maybe us us in the UK are a bit weirder than we realize to the rest of the world anyway um, it's not weird to us of course because we all do it uh, cat lady she says the work is now complete she says the plastering was done on friday um, they have furniture still stored in other rooms as the lounge needs repainting uh, once the plaster is dry 
and then a new carpet uh, and they can put laminate back down where they need to. Uh, she said hopefully it will be back to a usable space by November. Uh, she says now the dust has settled it is not as bad as it was. Well that's good. Um, there's nothing worse than chaos in your own home really it's supposed to be your sanctuary uh she says at least she can diamond paint now well there you go all is right with the world if um <coughs> if you can diamond paint again uh caroline says can you please post a link to the large clips that i use to hold my canvas down um, she says wishing you and your family well um, the company I originally got these clips from um, don't actually have them on their site anymore but they are also called towel clips for clipping beach towels to chairs and things to stop them blowing about so that's probably what you're best searching for um, but yeah, they're not actually, the place I got them from, the link doesn't work anymore. Unfortunately, it was quite a bit ago that I got them. Uh, Jeanette, she says, thank you for the ideas regarding the advent calendar, the 24 day. She says she's going to give it to her daughter for safekeeping until December. She said on the topic of biscuit, for me, she says, for herself, it is similar to a scone, but that's her personal information. Uh, personal opinion, sorry, personal information. Well, I suppose it is personal information <laughs> in the form of an opinion. Um, I can't remember what somebody was eating on a biscuit now. It was something savoury, though. I still don't know that I'd put something savoury on a scone either. Then again, I like a scone with jam and clot clotted cream, so... Gotta love, gotta love clotted cream. Um, JD says she can't wait, they can't wait for the new tray. Yeah, it's exciting with the new trays. Uh, we are busy trying to build sort of a bit of a stock up, um, but we will be printing the new trays basically throughout the next three months. Um, while it is a limited item, in the fact that at some point in November we will say, okay, what we have printed is the last of the stock. Uh, we will continue to print for demand through September and October. Uh, it will just be at some point in November we will say, okay, things have died off now. Here's the amount we have left. And when they're gone, they're gone. Um, which is what makes it limited. But we are trying, there's quite a few items that we, you know, is a matter of we can meet your demand. And then there's a couple of items that we have a set amount of stock, but we have bought a lot more than usual. So we're hoping that people will be able to spread out their purchases if they want to for the September launch. Um, but trays is one that you can definitely hold off on. Um, if if you want to okay that memory card definitely took longer to save so i think i fixed whatever setting got adjusted um so yeah we're just trying to help people be able to spread things out if they need to for september launch but a couple of things are going to work a little bit differently um not many things not big things but um yeah we just it will be a matter it's too busy for us to get all orders out from friday night for monday uh, so we will be dispatching orders in the order that they're received as soon as we can um, and we won't be able to combine any orders for september they're the main two changes uh, the admin behind combining orders um, while you may think for one order it's not much, um, it can actually take quite a while when there's a high volume of orders. Firstly, to figure out what does need combining, then to combine, then to ensure that refunds for overpayment of postage are processed, 
um, and to ensure that the accounting is updated with all of that you add that up a few times and it just it just takes too long to do in September um, so that's another reason we're trying to make sure that the pressure is sort of reduced so that you can have the time to ensure that you have got everything you want on your order uh, we've got a lot of stock of the painting we've got more stock than what we have sold in total of the diamond painting for last year so that is the initial wave of diamond paintings and the two restocks we have ordered more than those um, so there should be plenty for everybody to be able to order when they're ready uh, or at least ensure that they've got everything in the basket they want uh, yeah <coughs> Anne says glad to see that I'm more comfortable with multi-placing I'm getting there I'm a lot better on this painting than I am on any other at the moment I was good at the aura lower painting the the seize the day painting that was actually a square um, I quite enjoyed doing that one I seem to do uh, seem to do fairly well with that one now whether it was just because of the way the painting was so there was quite a lot of blocks of color on that one but then surrounded by more single placed colours, uh, which gave me the chance to nudge any any multi placing that had gone wrong. I was able to nudge it all. Um, so yeah, whether that helped or not, I'm not sure. Um, probably did. I have done a little bit on my other large painting, but not a lot. I haven't done any on my mystery though. But that's kind of because I do a smaller section and I'm really trying to embrace the process more with the mystery painting uh, and actually wanting it to last a bit longer. Wanting it to be something that takes a while. Um, Kaz says she's loving this week's video. Thank you. Uh, and Polly says for me to do what works for me. She works on her, her current whip while she listens to me. Uh, she looks up once in a while as needed. Well, that'd be quite a few times today, the amount of things that I keep dropping or messing up um, in today's video. But it's all good. It all works out in the end. Uh, Liash, or is that Leah? It might be Leah. It's a, it's a, it looks like a first name and potentially a surname, but potentially something else mixed in. Um, she says she started on her biggest diamond painting project to date, uh, and it's an absolute monster. Uh, it is 220 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Goodness me, that is even bigger than my heaven and earth design. Um, which, while it is two and a half metres long, it is only 40 centimetres wide. We are not talking 100 by 220. That is a beast. That's going to take you a while. She says if she completes a section a day, she just might complete it by 2050. <laughs> she says your videos are amazing and often often the highlight of her chaotic day. She says thank you for all that you and the family do for us. Oh, thank you. We do enjoy it. Well, I hope we do. Hobby is currently messing. He's messing. Um, so we did get we did get another one of our sort of more high end printers, 3D printers, uh, and we have a new a new tool for that printer that allows us to actually switch colours within the print of a tray. Um, so he's messing about with some new designs for that where we actually change colours within the tray 
which means we can buy a single colour roll and combine it with any other single colour roll that we can get hold of. Uh, we are trying to stick to sort of one manufacturer and one type, so colours are limited in that sense. Um, but we're going to mess about with a few things, um, see what works, and yeah, that'll be something in 2024. Once we've got things finalised, working right, uh, how we like. Um, and yeah, should be able to give us the scope to bring you more different and unique things um, as much as possible. That's the plan. Um, Irene, she says, hi, Rebecca. She says it is already looking beautiful, which is this painting. Um, and she says, and you'll be glad when it's finished. I'm looking, I'm getting to the point of excited for this one to finish because it's so near the end. Um, it's just got this last sort of top strip to go. So I am getting to the point where it's like, oh, yes, it's so close to being finished. It'll be nice to have it finished. Um, but I am still enjoying doing it as well. Whether I decide to forego my decision wheel on the basis of finishing this painting off, um, I'm not quite sure yet. I'm a little bit half and half, and there's a couple of reasons I'm half and half. Uh, one is, I don't think, in fact, let me have a look what my dates are. Um, so since June, I have, oh, okay. Um, that's not the one, that's why I clicked on the wrong button. Um, since June, there has been a few videos that I have filmed sort of in advance, mainly kit up and preparation videos. I like to spread, spread them out. So, sorry, preparation videos and breakdown videos. I like to spread them up out. I don't want to put up three breakdown videos in a week because that can just get boring. So I spread them out over the weeks. Uh, but there was quite a few sort of at the end of June where I've kitted things up and kitted things down and stuff. Um, so the other large painting that I'm working on, I'm trying to see when the kit up video for that has gone up or is going to go up. Okay, so that actually goes up next Saturday. So that does give me more scope. So this Saturday coming up. Um, my large paintings currently is my Diamond Art Club mystery painting, which of course I do not want to do a whip and waffle on. Um, I did one for the first section, but after that I don't want to spoil anybody's excitement that has the mystery painting themselves. Same way I don't want mine spoilt. Um, I want it to be revealed over time. Uh, but then I did, of course, kit up Seize the Day as a third large painting. And I actually managed to finish that, I think, before the kitting up video even went up because it happened over June, July time. Um, so I have kitted up a third large painting. I do have... Um, I got the decision wheel to spin for me. Uh, so I have this painting on the go. I have my Diamond Art Club Mystery and then I have another large painting. And um, it actually, the kitting up video for it goes up next Saturday. So I can work on that one next Sunday for the Whip and Waffle. So I was half and half about how quick I want to finish this one because I still wanted to have a painting that you guys have seen me kit up that I can bring on to a current Whip and Waffle because they're always filmed within the week. So they're up to date. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really mu very much at the point now for August that I am pretty much up to date with all videos. <coughs> I think once, uh, there might be a couple of paint gem kitting ups or kitting downs um, to come after it. 
but once I've kitted up that next large one, you're sort of a lot more up to date. And because I've not been able to diamond paint much in this last month, um, you're very much more up to date. Like I've not done much of the one that you'll see the kitten on video for on Saturday. I've not done huge amounts of it, so it's not going to appear on a video and be like half done. Um, so the other thing, the other reason that I may concentrate on this one for a little bit to get it finished. So my initial plan, here we go, you get in my thought process initial plan, but then my excitement takes over and changes everything. So my initial plan was to have two large square paintings kitted up. One of them sort of a standard painting, which is the one I'll kit up on Saturday for you guys to see. Uh, one large round painting kitted up, which is this one. And then if I have a third one, it would be something that's different. So it's the Diamond Art Club mystery at the moment. Uh, I then, then do plan on kitting up one of the Diamond Art Studio 100 plus colours. Um, sort of, so they're sort of my slow burners. So the Diamond Art Club mystery, whenever it's picked by the decision wheel, I only do one section, one small cover paper section, and then I move on to something else. Whereas when it would pick, say, this painting, I would uncover two or three sections, depending on how much time I had. So my Diamond Art Club mystery is a slow burner. Um, the diamond painting with 190 plus colours, of which I still need to decide which one I want to do. Um, that one too will be what I class as a slow burner. Um, whether I kit it up before I finished my Diamond Art Club mystery or after, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, but yeah, the idea was to have one round painting, one square painting, and then one that was different for whatever reason. A slow burner for whatever reason. I was deciding, do I bring in a 30 by 40 painting as well? Which would sort of be one that would be completed a little bit quicker. Uh, and therefore give me the satisfaction of finishing one. But still allowing my large paintings to be worked on. But... This is the spanner in the works. I've just received my white Christmas painting this week. Dreamers Designs White Christmas and it has arrived. And I unboxed it in, a, in an extra video. I threw up an extra video on showing the unboxing of it because um, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. So part of me would like to finish this painting and then do that painting, do the white Christmas painting, sneak it in, another one that's sort of getting snuck in before, ignore the decision wheel, I'm doing that painting, um, but it's a square, so it means I'd have two squares on the go and no round. I suppose whenever I finish my next square, I could make that a round. Maybe that's what I'll do. So maybe I will, once this is finished, um, I will kit up White Christmas because it's gorgeous and I'd love to put it up for Christmas, um, which means because this is a busy few months, it needs to be kitted up sooner rather than later to have a hope of being finished because it's huge. Um, yeah, so that's my thought. Maybe I could do a 30 by 40 painting that's around so that I'm mixing up the type of diamond painting that I'm doing. Um, in that case, I think I may have to wait on the 190 plus colour painting. Um, I'm not sure. Because, you know, I could do them all because at the end of the day, the decision wheel picks which one. Um, but I'm also conscious that if I do have all of those options of paintings, it's like I'm never going to finish one <laughs> because they just they just keep going, going and going and going, and it'll be like I never get a painting completed. 
So yeah, feel free to let me know your thoughts. I don't think you could change my mind over White Christmas. I think that one is getting kitted up when this one is finished um, because I've just fell in love with it well and truly. Question is, do I add in a 30 by 40 for a bit of, you know, quick wins? When it picks the 30 by 40, the app would probably only need to pick it a few times and, and it would be completed. A few evenings work. Um, and do I kit up uh, one of the 190 plus colours as another slow burner? to work on because that's something else that I would probably only do a section each time but it is a slow burner that I could show on on a whip and on a whip and chat on a whip and waffle so it's it's not one that sort of stays hidden uh, and then tick along with all of that that could be a good option then I could tick along with all of them but get my completions from my 30 by 40s um, and get that stashed down a little bit and the satisfaction of getting those completed so yeah let me know your thoughts I'm just there's a couple of these that are stuck together so I'm just going to try and get these all pretty much the right way up there's a couple of them that are being a bit stubborn because uh, I'm not going to tip out any more of these unless because there's enough that I can get, tip out more into my tray if I get this far across the painting, which may happen because I keep getting distracted from the questions. <laughs> keep getting distracted by it all. Uh, my battery's flashing on my camera as well, so I'm trying to get these diamonds placed and then I can go and grab a brew, um, change my battery and come back and continue my long whip and waffle. There we go. Okay, so my tray's empty. I'm gonna go and grab myself a brew. I'm gonna change the battery. For you guys, it'll be a blink of an eye. So, blink quick. I am back and refreshed. <laughs> refreshed with a brew and having a look at um, what Hobby is messing with with trays, which I'm sure he'll have posted in the group by the time. I've got myself set up again. <laughs> but, okay, let's get on to my next colour. Oh, I might be able to actually get some multi-placing done on this one. I'm definitely better at a vertical multi-placing than horizontal. So, Oh, my glue dot is very sticky. Um, so yeah, this glue dot's had a bit of chance to settle now. Needs a little bit of priming. I'm sure it'll take me a little bit to get this, the glue dot back to being perfecto. Also, I need to remind myself that I don't need to press as hard as I did with the putty. Uh, because the putty was getting older, I needed to press a little bit harder to make sure that I was getting hold of the diamonds properly, whereas the glue dot is doing very well at getting hold of the diamonds. Um, there's some of these rows that are not, don't have the straightest diamonds. You do find you get more different sizes on round and with multi-placing I'm always trying to pick the most attractive set of diamonds um, with multi-placing more so than with single placing. With single placing I have a bit more control over um, how to place the diamond to make it look right when it's down. Whereas with multi-placing, you sort of get what you're given a little bit. So I'm trying to be picky. And doesn't like that one at the bottom. Okay, got a few down. Let's go back to single placing. I know what I'm doing there. 
uh, Crystal, she says she was going to say um, on the last Whipple Waffle that her favourite breakfast sandwich is sausage and cheese biscuit, she said, but she knew I would think it was a digestive. <laughs> She says, but she's going to stop here and she's going to go and see if she can find the best explanation for what uh, they in America call a biscuit. And then she said, be right back. And then she said, duh, she said, it's a scone. See, sausage and cheese on a scone? Nah, scone is a sweet thing, not a savoury thing. I just, I just don't get that. But then again, I am one that doesn't get having bacon on pancakes either. So maybe that is, um, maybe that is more me than everybody else. Just, no. Nah. Pancakes and scones are sweet things to me rather than savoury. Maybe you make a scone different. Who knows? Oh. Got a rogue diamond there. It was upside down, so it's obviously fell off my pen or fell out of my tray en route to my diamond painting somewhere. But hey, it's out of the way now. Uh, this is a gorgeous sort of pink to mix in with the AB. Do we have any more? Not that I can see. So we're on to another one. I think I can multiplace quite a bit. The number six. So let me get these diamonds away. Okay, I've just managed to fling a load of diamonds everywhere. So obviously having a stop and having a drink has not helped uh, in my ability to actually function with things today. So it is gonna be one of those days all day but hey ho that's fine <clears throat> we will deal with what life throws at us today um bev she says hi everyone she says she hopes that everybody had a lovely weekend she knows she did she's awesome she says it is interesting she said in how uh, we do things differently and she said she was glad that I mentioned it in the Whip and Waffle. She says because she has watched a fair few kitting up videos now by various different people um, and she says you all use the case differently to what she does. Uh, everyone goes left to right with their labels on the screw top um, and she goes from top to bottom. Ah, see I think it's the whole reading thing that makes me go from left to right. She says, is, is she the only one that thinks that it makes more sense that way? See, I go the reading way. That's why I go from left to right because it's the way you read um, which is probably why a lot of people do. So maybe, Bev, you are thinking of something else when you go up and down, you know, whether it be you work with, hang on, do you go, oh, you go from top to bottom. So do you work with spreadsheets a lot, maybe? And you're used to things being down in a list rather than written across? Do you work with lists a lot? Uh, Kathy does say she likes top to bottom as well. So maybe it's something to do with that, something to do with you going with the list format, uh, bullet point format type thing rather than the reading format. Uh, and maybe it is something in your life that you do on a regular basis that involves a list that makes that your default over um, reading. So, very interesting though. Um, KS says, biscuit for breakfast is made with flour milk, shortening and baking soda slash powder. 
she says, cut into thin rounds and baked in the oven. She says, often eaten with gravy for breakfast. Gravy for breakfast? Ah, gravy goes on a Sunday, doesn't it? Um, or other breakfast foods. I'm going to have to give these a go because I don't think these these biscuits are, while, you know, people may say it's similar to a scone, maybe that's similar to a scone in look because she didn't say it had sugar in that recipe and scones have sugar in them, which is what to me makes them a sweet rather than a savoury. So yeah, maybe they are actually something that is, it's very different. They just look like a scone. <coughs> uh, Mysterious Days, she says on the news um, of the name debacle, she said her legal name is Janet, uh, which she's always felt is an older lady's name. And she is 20 something currently. Um, this is due to her kindergarten teacher forcing her to go by Janet and not by Janice or Jace, which she had her entire life until then. She said she was actually supposed to go by Charlie uh, based off her middle name, but Jace stuck first. She said Charlie is actually her middle name, uh, is the female variant of her father's name, uh, her grandfather's name, Charles. Um, so it's Charlene. She says she loves it uh, and it doesn't just feel like a first name. She said in her teens she beca became being bullied and nicknamed Jan which she absolutely hated uh, and due to that trauma she says she is very particular on nicknames for herself. Uh, only within the last few years has she been going by Charlie which has now stuck. Um, so she uses, she uses Charlie or Janet. There we go. Um, it's amazing how life experiences of things and often um, life experiences in the likes of school um, where kids can be quite vicious. They can be quite innocent, but they can also be quite vicious. Uh, not always intentional, but it still can be vicious. Sometimes it is, but not always. Um, how it can just shape how you feel about things or things that you like and things that you carry on into later life. Quite amazing how it can, I say, carry on for quite a while um, because of how something like that's made you feel. It's what makes us all different, I suppose. Life experiences can definitely make you feel different. Now, I'm just giving myself another reshuffle. I was losing all my towers of diamonds. So get the rest of them lined up. And then hopefully I can get a few more. Though I am lifting up Lifting up the canvas quite a bit on this one with my glue dots because I am in the top corner. I'm going to have to give a few of those a re, a re jig, I think. But let's see if I can get a few down because it definitely gets it filled up a bit quicker. Uh, and I also kind of like filling in the gaps. I kind of like the straightening and neatening when I fill in the gaps. I try very much not to straighten too much when I'm actually doing it. If there's quite a bit around it that needs filling in. Because it's like, well, if I go back and it still bothers me, then I can nudge it while I'm there. But if I all of a sudden don't notice it, then obviously it wasn't that bad. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um... Truth 2731 says, as always, another 
great waffle. Uh, they unfortunately had to watch it in two sittings um, as she just started to when her sister texts to say that they were on their way to pick her up for a day trip out to their family camp. Um, although most places would call it either a cottage or a cabin, in northern western Ontario, 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 Ontario. Um, we say we're going to camp, not to the cottage. She says ours is on a lake called Shibandowan. Um, she did give me a breakdown of spelling on that one. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, so she finished when they got back. Um, she said, unfortunately, due to some issues in the family, it wasn't as pleasant as it could have been. Um, but we did, but we did what they needed to do. They said without going into the unpleasant business. She said it was nice to come back and watch the rest of the waffle and just relax. Sounds like you needed it after a day out with with drama um, and things that, you know, just powering through and getting done what you need to get done. So I'm glad you could have that little bit of a respite when you got back. Claw back your day before you went to bed um, and hopefully make everything feel a bit better. Uh, Kim, she says, hi, Rebecca. She says she works at a library in Indiana. Oh, awesome job, especially if you get time to read. Um, she says they have a couple of free apps available uh, through their library to borrow ebooks and audiobooks. Hoopla and Libby. She said, do libraries in the UK have the same type of apps? Um, available that you can use instead of subscribing to Audible. Uh, she says she's just curious. Uh, they may well do. I haven't been in a library for years, I must say. Uh, we did go quite often when the kids were younger. They did love reading, so they did like to go to the library and change out their books. Uh, one that was really close to us actually closed down and moved uh, and it still became somewhere we could get to but not quite as easy uh, but we did go albeit not as often um, and the kids did enjoy it but I suppose when the kids were younger audiobooks wasn't as much of a thing um, like you know they were available for sure um, and you know I probably could have loaned things but it would have been on a cassette tape rather than an actual download version so it's not actually something I've checked out uh, to be honest I'm very time poor often um, and you know trying to fit in to go and then borrow them audible is audible is convenient for me um, so I don't mind paying the price each month. There's there's many, many sort of books that you can get for free when I fancy trying something out or as part of the subscription, should I say. They're not free for everybody to listen to, but they are free for a subscriber to listen to. So there's quite a few different options if I don't want to spend more than my usual credits. Uh, the I say the one main thing I have spent all of my credits on and bought more for is the JD Rob books because I have listened to them a few times um, and will listen to them again uh, more so than any other books. I don't know why it's a it's a mixture of the mystery that I like, um, but it's also quite easy listening and you've got the characters that sort of go throughout it so it's one of those books that I can listen to again because even though I know who done it um, there is so much of the characters that grow and intertwine within it and I often find 
that when I first listen to the book, I'm very focused on the story and who done it. Uh, it's sort of, you know, the, the biggest takeaway from the book is the who done it. Um, but then when I re listen to the books, often in a batch, I often re listen to the last few before some new one is due out. Um, that's when I more pay attention to the characters um, and the character development sort of more so in the background. So I feel like I get a bit more out of the book each time I listen to it. So I'm more than happy to more than happy to pay towards those ones. Um, but yeah, if we ever end up near the library again, um, it is in sort of a complex with a few other things, then maybe I'll find out if that's something they do have. Um, it may be handy if there's a few authors that I fancy trying, uh, but maybe they are, don't have any sort of free audible book for me to check them out. Because sometimes it can be the narrator as much as the author. <laughs> The narrator can can make or break a book sometimes, and if they're hard to listen to, then yeah, it's not quite the same. Right, have I got any sixes that I've missed apart from this over here? I know I've got this strip here, <coughs> but I'm very close to sort of finishing what's in my tray. I'm very close to having exactly the right amount. I think I might be one out to finish this strip. So I've got one here and then I do have one stuck actually on the side of my tray. Right, get off my finger. I've actually got one. You see, it's got itself caught there. So let's, let's pick that one up. I'm one short. So I am, oh no, I've got one on my desk. <laughs> Bonus. I've got one that I've obviously missed the tray when I've tipped it out. So we'll have that. Now I'm a bit between doing this R, in fact, I think I'm gonna do this R because it is up here as well. So it is part of my line uh, and it will just, if I do these ones, it will help me fill in this gap before I go on to the black. So let's do that. Um, Kim also says, she says she works 40 hours a week um, and she is basically too exhausted after work, um, after all day working to do any diamond painting. So she definitely looks forward to the weekend um, so she can enjoy her new hobby. Uh, she says, instead of actually diamond painting through the week, she relaxes by watching me do the hobby. Um, have a great day and thanks for doing the work for me. Well, enjoy me doing the work again on this one. Uh, I am feeling a little bit of a drive to get this one finished, I think, at the moment. Uh, it's quite excited to be able to actually have a longer whip and waffle as well so that I can plough through some more of this and I think White Christmas turning up has also has helped push me along this week to want to finish this one. Um, Jessica, she says she feels like uh, someone should put a Facebook post in the group uh, where everyone can comment where they are putting their advent. Um, and then on the 1st of December, someone can give the post a nudge so that we get notified. I like that idea. Maybe I'll do something and pin it. Maybe I'll pin a post where you can all comment just to say where you're hiding your advent, your 24-day advent. Uh, it might give some other people of some good ideas uh, and give you a chance to encourage each other to actually save your advent as well and not open it um, because I'm sure there will be people that will have a very strong urge. I know there was last year, uh, there were some people who gave in to that urge 
um, but there was quite a few that did have an urge to open their advent early um, but yeah you're only spoiling your own excitement by opening it early opening it once a day gives you 24 days of excitement opening it all at once only gives you one day so that's my view anyway and I'm sticking to it uh, Uh, Nelly says hi Rebecca she says she just noticed that I have a simple that knows looks like a paper clip to me it's a phone oh a symbol that looks like a paper clip oh yes the one that I say looks like a staple this one uh, if it's going to focus you're going to focus camera likes to focus further down can you focus on that please trying to press the screen to get it to focus on that no it's not having it oh there we go can we see so i call that a staple but it does look like a phone as well i do get the idea of people calling that one a phone instead um i don't know why it it's one of those as soon as something enters your head for something it often can end up getting stuck there. Only tipped out a few of these and there's actually more. Um, Lady Dax says she's watching the Whip and Waffle on a Monday as she had a trip to Scotland, no, to South End. That'll teach me to glance and then move away. Uh, South End on Sea yesterday for P. Jelly's birthday. I hope you had an amazing birthday, P. Jelly. Uh, she says she went on all the rides while she looked on in horror she said she used to love them um but age has now got the better of her uh, she said but she did love the time spent in arcades i don't think arcades ever get old do they it's not about the gambling is it it's about the 2p machine the little slot machines and seeing if you can get a prize yeah they're fun um she says all she has to do now is recover from the pains in her legs from standing and walking the whole day. Uh, but she thinks it's worth it, she said, to have seen the happiness on her face. And I'm sure there was happiness on your face as well. Uh, maybe not as much when the day got on, but I'm sure there was earlier on. Um, Anastasia, she says she has a funny story regarding her name. She said she did share a bit in the Facebook group. Um, in the Facebook group, uh, but she will explain more here. She says her birth name was Rebecca as well. Hello to another Rebecca. There is a few. Sorry, I'm half looking for symbols as well. Uh, she said, and it was all she always felt that it was too common of a name for her. See, in my high school, uh, in my primary school, I don't remember having anybody else in my class called Rebecca. Um, in my high school, we had like two halves of the year, so there was like six classes in each half. Um, and we say two halves because like one half would do French and the other half would do German and sort of timetables were worked around each half of the year rather than them overlapping. Uh, there was one Rebecca in the other half of the year and that was it. So it didn't feel too common for me. Um, she says in grade school, she says there were many times that there was three or four Rebeccas in her class. And that's where I think the big difference is. I didn't have that at all. Um, maybe it was the, maybe that's down to the age I am. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I didn't get that in school. Um, she said she would try to spell her name differently or go by a nickname, she says, but it never really fit. Um, she said she also could not stand being called Becky, yeah, which I didn't like either. Uh, she says, but she got older. She said it still never felt 
very close to her name. Uh, she still didn't feel close to it. So she said four years ago, she legally changed her entire name to something that felt more unique and meaningful to her. Uh, she said she had a rough past and felt that the person she was back then was not the person she is now. So she chose a name that fit who she is. I love that idea. Uh, there are times that it is, in effect, perfect to change your name. Um, and there are times that, there, you know, that you need to adopt or take on your name fully and what it all encompasses but i love the fact that it's never felt right and you've put that right <coughs> she says it also represented everything that she had fought for and strived to be uh, she chose the name anastasia because it means she will rise again and rebirth uh, the meaning of the name really stuck with her because she never let things keep her down and she insisted that she would get back up and rise up stronger than before. She said her name now feels like it empowers her rather than her making her feel like another person in a crowd. <laughs> she says not to say that Rebecca isn't a nice name. She said it just didn't fit me and what she wanted it to be. Well, there is no offence taken at all in relation to that. I completely understand your reasonings. Say so it's often things that we go through in life, often in childhood. Um, say yours wasn't necessary. Well, I don't know what the other circumstances were, but in relation to your name, a lot of it was the fact that there were other kids called by the same name whereas I didn't experience that um and yeah it just it, everybody's life and circumstances are different uh and you know there are names that I love I love the names that my kids have um but I wouldn't have them as my own name because to me they're not my own name it doesn't mean you don't like a name because it's not suitable for you. Um, and even if you didn't like the name because of your own reasons, um, it doesn't mean I shouldn't. We all like different things for different reasons. Um, and that is what makes us us. Um, and yeah, I love it. Uh, Diamond Calicaloo. She says, hi, Rebecca. She says she's been away so long. She says, but today she felt like listening to YouTube again. Um, and she chose mine, she says, and she felt she felt again why she loved my videos so much in the first place. Oh, thank you. Uh, she says, thank you so much. She says she has pre-ordered her advent calendar. Uh, she is so happy to get one of the 24, 24 days one this year. And she is looking forward to catching up on all the videos she's missed. Well, you are going to have a lot to be able to listen to, I'm sure. Uh, there's loads of different styles of videos depending on which ones you prefer as well. You can pick and choose while well, it's been a while, but it's lovely to see you back. Um, Streaks Me says, warning, lol, a lengthy comment. She says, hello, Rebecca. She says she is loving my whip painting quite a bit. Uh, she said, did she hear me saying that when I am making my whip and waffle videos that I stand up? She says, how does your back handle it? Um, yes, I do stand up uh, while filming these videos. I have in the past had like a, a little bit of a bar chair type thing. But to be honest, when I folded it down when I wasn't doing videos and was using the craft room as the craft room uh, it got flipping annoying having it about uh, it got in my way more times than it was helpful and I would often 
start a whip and waffle sat on the chair and would end up 10 minutes in coming off it anyway. Um, my desk is higher than counter height um, and I'm short. So um, the desk actually comes to the bottom of the desk. Oh, it's quite a bit above my belly button. <laughs> it's probably it's probably in my middle uh, where the desk comes up to. So I don't find that I get backache because I'm not hunching in any way. I'm stood up straight. Um, actually packing the advent, the 24 day advents, I feel that in my neck more so. Megan feels it in her back. I feel it in my neck. Um, probably because she's taller than I am uh, when we're working at counter height to pack them uh, but I don't feel it in my craft room because my desk is the right height for standing um, so it's a bit like those standing computer desks and things you can get I'm guessing you have to get it sort of to the right height for you um, so it doesn't really affect me as much. I spend a, quite a bit of the day on my feet anyway, even if it's just between packing orders, refilling stock. There might be sections that I sit down, but I, I can be known to be stood in here replying to emails on the computer rather than going and taking it and sitting on the couch to do so. So it really doesn't bother me. Um, and when I'd, I, I'm more likely to want a break before for a coffee before I want to sit down. Uh, and that's what I've been doing in this whip and waffle is I've disappeared once so far. Um, I haven't got to comments from last week's whip and waffle yet, so I may be doing it again. Um, but yeah, dipping, dipping to go and get a coffee is more important to me than sitting down though I do sit down for a bit while I am getting a coffee so um, it tends to help plus I do have a very nice pair of Birkenstocks that were bought for me um, by the children I'd got a pair of sort of sliders more cheaper ones but sliders um, from my work colleagues when when I was working. Uh, it was a request I'd made um, to have some for going outside with Luna when she was a pup. And yeah, I, I sort of wanted to test how much I'd be likely to use them. And I was wearing them all the time. So uh, one of the things I tend to give um, as, as a potential Christmas or birthday present and I can't remember whether it was Christmas or birthday that the kids got me them is to upgrade something that I use a lot but maybe I didn't get the best quality of it when I first got it um, and then gifts I know I will use often and it's sort of a way to treat yourself um, whereas I wouldn't necessarily have replace those shoes yet because they were still doing the job um, so yeah I do stand on a pair of Birkenstocks which have now well and truly shaped to me um, and I have a rug in here and stuff so I can always kick them off uh, and just stand bare feet I, I often well in fact before I got my Birkenstocks I was always walking around um, with bare feet in the house um, it was because I needed to be going out with a dog that I actually figured I needed to have a pair of shoes that I could slide on and off uh, but I have got to the point where I just keep my Birkenstocks on a lot so that also helps having a nice pair of sort of comfy molded shoes but yeah standing up doesn't bother me um, she also says she has kitted up five paintings within the last week. Most of them are 30 by 30s, uh, but she has got the odd 40 by 50. She said she loved the idea of using 
the decision wheel uh, but she is trying to make up her mind how much of the painting she wants to do uh, when it chooses one okay so that a lot of that is personal preference so I actually do a mixture so for my big paintings so for my dreamer designs and for my other large painting that I have on the go if it chooses that painting then I will work on that painting all night that is that evening that's the painting I'm doing um, they're big paintings you know, I can do a nice fair chunk of them, feel like they're getting somewhere, especially when it then may not be touched for a few days. If I add a 30 by 40 to the mix, I think I would do the same thing with the 30 by 40. Um, if it picked the 30 by 40, I would work on that painting all evening. Um, and depending on how much time I've got in an evening would depend on how much I got completed. Um, but I would have, I would get a fair chunk done. The difference is my 30 by 40s, I would get done quicker than my small ones. Um, paint gem minis, I do a paint gem mini. So they're normally a quick one and then I'll spin the wheel again. As I've already mentioned, last night it decided to pick it four times. So I ended up doing four paint gem minis and then decided it was too late to change up uh, and therefore I did another one or two. Um, but then I do have other ones. So my Diamond Art Club Mystery, primarily, apart from the other day when I just decided I wanted to do it and I did a couple of sections at once, I will do one cover paper section of that because that's a painting that I would like to last a little bit longer. Um, as much as I love doing all diamond paintings, the fact that it gets revealed little bit by little bit, um, I prefer to do that than do a big chunk. Um, whereas on the likes of this painting, it's already been revealed as such. I'm just colouring it in. Um, so for that one, I just do one section because of the enjoyment factor, I'm not going to be buying mystery diamond art club paintings all the time. Not at that price for not knowing if I'll like it. Um, I got a pretty much the safest bet I think I could have got with the mystery I did get. Um, but they don't release that type of mystery often enough for it to be something regular, even if I wanted it to. So I want that painting to last a while. Um, and then in turn, when it comes to doing one of the Diamond Art Studio large colour paintings, I'll be doing that in a small section as well. Uh, that will be because that one takes more brain power. It's a lot more thinking with one with that many colours. Double checking the symbols, taking the time, very confetti heavy you know lots of colour changes so I would do that one by section um, and then of course spin the wheel again for it to pick something else so I think you can vary it up according to the painting if there's if you're you know wanting to get them done so that you can get moved on to you know kitting up another one for example then Potentially then you would do a whole evening. Um, otherwise, change it up and change it about. It really depends on your personality as well. Um, there are times, like the other night when I was doing the mystery, I didn't want to change. I couldn't be bothered the changing, <laughs> the cycle of changing paintings and changing cases and... I just wanted to enjoy doing the mystery so I did a little bit more but it has been a long time since I've done it so I didn't feel like it I was speeding through it too fast um, so yeah take all those sorts of things into account and don't think you have to stick to one way or one rule change it up 
depending on what you feel. Um, she says on a good note, she has chose uh, ones that have colours she will need for her heaven and earth design. I love it. Choosing which paintings you're doing according to the spare diamond you'll have left over. Um, she said so it is a win-win for her. Uh, she said this past week has been a bit rough for her uh, as her sister fell um, at work and severely injured her neck. Um, she had surgery on the 7th where she had five vertebrae fused. Oof. She said surgery was successful, which is awesome news, uh, and she is now on to recovery. She said she hopes the week has gone well us yes it's been a regular kind of week over here which quite often we are thankful for or we need to be more thankful for a, a normal kind of week um very often and just enjoy the weeks that are calm because the storm comes to us all at different times uh Bogosayanik, no idea how to pronounce that one, but uh, they did say they wanted to order this painting from Dreamer Designs um, because it looks relaxing when I'm doing it, um, but it's not available anymore, which they said they are sad about. Is it out of stock or not available? I need to have a look now. Dreamer Designs. Um, oh, this is where it's it's trying to find. Oh, there we go. Found it. I was trying to think of one word because it's not in English, but one word. Okay, it says sold out. You can add it to your wish list though, along with seven hundred and seven other people. Um. It may be something that comes back in because they've not taken it off the website at all. So maybe it is something that you'll be able to get again. Uh, White Christmas is currently sold out as well. 274 people have that on their wish list at the moment. Um, so do get that one on your wish list as well because that one's quite recent. Uh, and I do actually think... It may have been a lot of my subscribers that completely wiped out that one. So according to the posts I've been told about people purchasing, it, it, it definitely, it was low stock when I, when I received mine. Um, but yeah, I think we may have sold it out. So get your names on the wish list. That may help things to come back in stock maybe even a little bit quicker if the numbers are quite high but it does seem like if they've got over well the website says they have over 700 people with this painting on their wish list um i would have thought that they would do another run of it um but do note that the especially the quality diamond paintings more so, it will be the same for other companies, but the quality diamond paintings, the actual process of getting an effect of restock done, even though the charting is already done, um, but it actually getting prepared and packaged and sent to the company and checked and all the rest of it isn't like a, you know, a two week process. It does take quite a bit because of course they are exclusive to that company so um, maybe it's something that they will get back in again so having a look I know I've got some number two down here I'm just checking if because uh, I'm trying to work primarily this away I just want to check that I'm not missing any before I dive into this section here that I can see um, Jerry, she says, hi, Rebecca. She says she is a little behind on my videos, but she has been catching up. 
um, she says, Cat Lady, she says, that was a very bad interview process. It was. It was shocking. Um, she says, and she is sorry to hear about it. She says, you are better off not being invited, in quotes, to work for that company, in her opinion. Yes. I think it, it would have been something that could have very easily turned into a nightmare and obviously was not um, their communication was not clear and if their communication is not clear in the beginning it will probably carry on not being clear um, which is not a good thing I've just thrown some diamonds all over my painting um, she says, Rebecca, she says, as far as my doctor comment, uh, which I must say, this is from a video two weeks ago. I can't quite remember, though it might come back to me. Um, oh, that was it. Doctor's appointments and um, the time you can end up waiting, I think. Uh, she said she had a doctor that would schedule the first appointment, uh, which was at 8.30 a.m., uh, and would not be seen until close to noon. See, that is disgusting. That is, if first appointment can't be on time, then it is not a doctor spending too much time with a patient. Uh, one of the doctors at our practice can be known for running late. However, um, she is also one such that sweetest loveliest person um, and will never make you feel as though you are not important when you are there and not make you feel as though you are rushed so even though you know we would know that if we booked a later appointment it would often be overrunning um, it was because of patient care not because of a superiority complex should we say um, and while it was frustrating uh, it was known so you could deal with it a bit better um, she said she learned to schedule for the first appointment uh, as she would make an early afternoon appointment and not get out of there until about 6 p.m. Uh, unfortunately, this doctor was the only orthopaedic that accepted the insurance in her town at that time. Uh, don't get me wrong, she said he was a great doctor when it came to doing a surgery. She said when she had enough, she requested a second opinion, but had to drive about 40 miles away to see another orthopaedic doctor. Fortunately, before her youngest had to have soldier surgery, there was another an alternative doctor they were able to see. Much better doctor and never ran late, as busy as he was. It, it does take a special type of person to be able to meet both, um, both patient care and um, time management. And... You know, you can forgive the time management thing a little bit if the doctor is, you know, better. And as I say, our doctor that ran over, it was never a huge, huge amount. You know, not talking half an hour or so. Um, but, you know, they would apologise when you came in. They would advise you that the doctor was running a little bit late. You know, and as I say, you never felt like you were being rushed because they were behind. Um, hospitals here can be the worst for it. I'm sure people think that when you have a hospital appointment, you have all day. Because you need all day, firstly, to find a car parking space. And then second, because everything just seems to run slow. Anyway, get off my pedestal for that one now. Luckily, I don't have to deal with it as much as many people do. Oh, I am up to the comments from last week. So we still have more comments to go through, but we are getting there, that's for sure. Right, what's my next colour? The letter H. Might be able to get some multi-placing in with this one as well. If I can find it, I should be able to find it. It's the alphabet. 
but it took me far too long then. Hey all. So, I'm back. When I did save the memory card that time, I did decide to go and get another brew because, as I mentioned earlier, Hubby has been messing. Uh, so he has been messing with a new feature we have on a printer that will allow us to do stripes on trays. So he's been messing with the zesty tray. This is the second one. This is one that turns out exactly how we want it to with a nice smooth base. Um, he's popped pictures up on Facebook, but I thought those that aren't on Facebook, I'll let you know. Uh, these colours aren't necessarily a colour scheme that we're doing. They're actually sample ones that came with our latest fastest printer. So we're using them for testing. Um, and yeah, I love it. I can't wait to do this in a black and white. I just feel like it's going to be a bar mug tray. Uh, but he's also been messing with a second item. Um, so there is going to be a couple of little tweaks we think on this. This again is part two. Um, first part, he did what he did a lid that would that would touch sort of this bottom, but fully sit in, uh, have nothing over the edge um, and it sort of worked but it was a bit hard to get out and there was a couple of times we had to hit it like that which is no good if you've got drills in it. Uh, this is prototype number two and it sits inside your tray. Um, now you know if you bash it hard enough if you dropped it on the floor it would come out um, but it would give you that initial option for a lid. Um, we tested it on trays from both of our printer types. We do have two. It fits a bit snugger on one of the others um, and because of this divot down you can actually get something in there to pull this out. If you don't have fingernails though um, it can be a little bit trickier. So he's looking at potentially making this just a little bit thicker and having a little divot for you to be able to get your finger in there and get it out but we are looking at lids um, for trays I know people have been wanting lids um, depending on how you work I say it's not necessarily um, without redesigning the whole tray which we don't want to do, um, partly because, you know, this design works and you start adding different features. We'd rather have things that will work with trays you already have and not only work with trays that you don't have. Uh, so we might look at printing this in a different material so that it can squish in a little bit. There's a few different things we're going to play with. So this is going to be... Um, a, a bit down the line but we have been looking at the potential for lids as well as stripes and things. Uh, stripes is our first initial play. Um, so yeah this is a couple of things that we work on in the background. Hubby say has had a bit of a 3D printer messing kind of day. He does listen to your requests um, but of course it does he does work full time as well so plus you've sort of got to be in the mood to be designing um, and messing with the software so yeah I thought while I am in and out <laughs> while I'm doing this extra long whip and waffle that is still going on um, I thought I would show you where we're up to so it needs quite a bit of a shake to get it out um, but we are going to try try it with a different material as well, not just the same stuff that the tray is made out of, and see if that makes a difference um, in relation to the lids. But yeah, I'm going to pop that one to the side and actually get back to my painting and the whip and waffle questions. Otherwise, um, this this video will never end. And I will spend my whole weekend diamond painting and chatting to you guys, which, to be fair, is not a bad thing. I have really enjoyed today. Um, I have been, say, in and out, well, twice now. 
I've been out twice now, seen an update. Um, when I first came in, I knew he was working on the stripe tray. I didn't know he was working on the idea for a lid. And I came in to finish, I was going to come in and finish uh, this last part of the whip and waffle, but he was printing that second lid. And I was like, mm, I'll just wait so I can take the lid in as well. Um, so yeah, rest assured, we are always, pretty much always, beavering away at other things. Uh, we do definitely listen to things that you want. Some things can take a little bit longer than others. I don't know why I pulled out a three then. I saw that as being three. And I think it was just the light reflecting off it. <coughs> um, yeah, so we often listen to all your suggestions. We can't do them all, but any that we can, uh, we do. And sometimes they sit there on the sort of back burner for a bit. Uh, you may have also seen on Facebook as well that we now have... We have now finally found what I have been looking for for a while um, and I gave the job to Megan this summer because somebody else asked for printed designs on cover paper uh, and it's something I have thought of quite a few times over the past six months or so uh, but not been able to find the product that would allow us to do that. So basically single sided um, release paper or cover paper, uh, which would allow us to put our own design on the other side. We did try printing on our cover paper. Didn't work so well. Uh, basically the, the ink can't fuse to it because we use a laser printer. Uh, which of course means if your items get wet, um, while wet and paper is not good, um, it won't dissolve the ink because we use a laser printer. So um, yeah, we had to go look. So I gave Megan the job this summer uh, and we think we have finally well, we have finally got a product. We are speaking to somebody next week um, about potentially getting it in a format that's a lot easier for us to print designs on. But yes, we did that little Facebook announcement the other day. So if you are on social media, do follow our Facebook or Instagram because there's a lot of notifications and sneak peeks that come up on there. Um, and then I've tried to give some on YouTube as well. Sometimes it is, it's either I give a sneak peek or discuss something we're doing a bit too quick. Uh, and then you guys have to wait quite a while for it, which I try not to do too often. But I can get excited. I can get excited about stuff that we, you know, have been working on. Um so while those items I've just shown you are next year, I kind of feel like I can at least give you the notice that it is next year. Uh, but sometimes I forget, you know, of something that we have sneak peeked and whether I've actually told you guys on YouTube as well. And sometimes I'll wait until I can do a dedicated video on it um, where you can see things in their full glory but for anybody that has stuck through this whip and waffle uh, at least you get to see some of the things that we're working on in fact i can show you something else as well megan did give a sneak <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh it is sure it is sure um this is this is another sneak so on the topic of cover paper this is single sided because of the printed on the other side, but who would want to hide the gorgeousness? Um, and it may go from one to 24. And that's all I'm saying on that front. We will, we will be announcing that one uh, very soon with a lot more images, but 
for those that have endured this whip and waffle throughout the length of time that I have been waffling on about all sorts who deserve a little bit of an extra sneak into something that's happening. <laughs> uh, Kaz says, good evening, Rebecca. She says she is eagerly awaiting her bounty from launch. Uh, thank you for what you do for the community. Oh, well, thank you for being the community that you are. You make it um, so pleasurable as well, doing doing stuff and if you know I whether it be an idea that we've come up with or whether it's an idea that one of you have come up with um you know you you support and keep supporting the business and the launches and things which enable us to keep doing keep doing it keep bringing you things that that we think of keep bringing you things that you guys think of um yeah it's a it's a really good a bit of tit for tat and I say if we can come up with things to support what you guys are doing um, then all the better and you guys have some amazing ideas um, you know we try and have good ideas as we go through and you know things and we can get excited about things that we find and things that we can do and put together um, but then you guys come up with such amazing ideas to go along with it which yeah just just makes it all so much fun uh, KS says uh, on rounds she says she has uh, paintings that while multi-placing she has to use a three or a five placer uh, no larger uh, and she has to center on the middle drill to the canvas. Yeah, so rounds can often vary in size, the drills more so than squares do. I say, I think it's just probably the way um, they're made. Like you, you, I don't tend to find you have those little nubs on square, on rounds quite as much which makes me think they are more done as kind of like a blob, um, which in turn can sometimes find its own shape um, compared to squares, which are more connected and more fixed. I mean, you can have some, but it tends to be more of a thing on squares than it is on rounds. So... Uh, Truth says, hello Rebecca, so it was a nice surprise to see that the whip and waffle had been released um, when, they, when they got back from running errands with her sister. Uh, she said this week she's had lots of people mispronouncing her name and it just reminded me on everyone's comments um, of having different spellings of their name. So she said her first name is Tanya, um, pronounced as Tanya with a Y instead of a J. So it is Tanya rather than Tanja. Um, see, I did read it as Tanya, even though it was a J instead of a Y. Um, but I can imagine it is different some I suppose it's just if you know somebody else who maybe has a J that's pronounced as a J maybe that might what makes you automatically pronounce it with more of a J than a yeah a J ja instead of a ya yeah. um she said lots of people have either been saying Tonya or they pronounce it so it's uh Tanya uh, she said since she was little she's had people trying to figure out her name um, and it doesn't help that her last name is a female name as well so her surname is also a female name um, so when called in to say a doctor's office uh, and anyone calls her name she says they usually stand there trying to figure out which name to use her first name her first her middle or her last name um said on her last name due to it being a first name 
she gets statements like your and then says her last name uh, oh she gets statements like people saying no what's your last name so it's like if you turned around and said so say her name was uh, Tanya Rebecca say uh, and they go what's your, what's your surname Rebecca no no what's your, what's your last name and it's like no that is my last name Oh, I can imagine it can get boring unless you just see it as pure entertainment, I suppose. Um, maybe you should keep yourself a little tally of how many people do it. Just try and make a game out of it. It, it, it gets a bit less tedious then. Um, she says, uh, <laughs> yeah, so she gives them her last name and they ask her if she's sure. That's just a standard response, isn't it? Like, are you sure? And it's like, are you sure you're asking me if I'm sure? Maybe that's what you should say. Are you sure you've just asked the right question? Um, she says it still happens and she is 48 years old. She said she can get a child being asked that question, uh, but someone her age, she said it just seems odd to her. Uh, just turn the question back on them, Tanya, and just say, um, would you like to think about that question before you ask it me again? Have you just asked me if I'm sure what my last name is? Are you? Are you sure? Um, she says, thank you again for another great waffle, she says, and she hopes everybody watching has a good week. Well, I hope you have an awesome week as well. Uh, and I hope you have somebody asking you that question soon enough so that you can ask them back and say, are you sure, are you actually asking me if I know my own surname? Maybe it will make a few of them think before they do it again. Uh, Ivan says, hi, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Uh, they need a opinions, solutions and advice and other cinnamon, cinnamons, I can't say that word, sorry, it's not working today. Uh, they are planning on purchasing a paint gem mini set for themselves for Christmas. Uh, but unfortunately, paint gem do not ship to their country. Um, this is where they need advice. Um, they have thought about a friend shipping it to their country, uh, but unfortunately, they don't have that kind of friend that would be able to. Um, they're probably going to purchase the Mystery 2.0 set if they can, uh, but they have other options. Uh, they said they're sorry if there is a mistake. Uh, or it's messy, but English isn't their mother tongue. Um, I'm not sure what country you are in, Ivan, um, but there are things called shipping forwarding companies. I know a couple of our customers use them um, for getting their orders to South Africa uh, because the South African postal, in you know, sort of internal white royal mail or usps or canada post is absolute shockingly pants um it is no good at all so i know a few people use a freight forwarding company which will then send it on via courier so they just pay like the inter-country shipping um so, for example, for us, they'll pay UK shipping uh, and it gets shipped to the UK company who then um, will be able to combine any and all of their orders and send it on to them or just the one. Uh, I'm not sure of the costings of all of these, um, but there are com countries that you can do that. So there is ones in the US, for example, if it's a company that doesn't ship to the UK um, I could actually use sort of like a freight forwarding company that I would get it posted to them and then they would post it to me um, 
you would end up paying more for that. But you're best finding one of those in the US. Um, Paint Gem, while they do ship to the UK, there is a charge to ship to the UK. So there would be that charge and then the freight forwarding charge on top. Uh, but if you could find a freight forwarder in the US that will ship to your country, uh, then you potentially could take advantage of free shipping within Paint Gem. So then you are just paying the forwarding shipping, which potentially you would have to do if Paint Gem shipped to your country in the first instance. So it might now end up costing you a great deal more. So that would be my suggestion. That would also give you options and keep the, the potential future purchases from Paint Gem option open for you, um, if that's something you wanted in the future. Uh, Zebra, 21 Zebra, um, says they have just purchased the Paint Gem Ocean set, which is the one I was working on one of last week and I actually worked on a few of them last night as well uh, in it with it keeping picking my paint gem set through my decision app um, I worked on worked on a few of the ocean sets while I was at it uh, so to enjoyed watching how I choose my ABs for each painting that's partly the reason I worked on that set during the Whip and Waffle. Change it up a little bit from this painting, even though it's gorgeous. It has, it has had quite a bit of prime time on this channel recently um, due to my schedule and of other stuff. Um, I have, well, I did have three Paint Gem mini sets kitted up. One is the mystery set, which I've just finished this last week um, and again for the same reasons I've not worked on the Diamond Art Club mystery painting is I don't want to work on that painting um, if somebody's got it who doesn't know what the images are I don't want them to not be able to watch the whip and waffle um, because they don't want to have the surprise ruined so I don't want to ruin anybody's surprises so I couldn't work on that one on last week's Whip and Waffle. And then my other set is only getting kitted up on this channel in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and while I've only done one or two of them, uh, I didn't want to pull that one into a Whip and Waffle as well. So I thought the Ocean set would have been perfect. It's been kitted up on my channel and it also had the ABs. So it gave me a discussion point to let you know where how I choose where to put my ABs. So I actually completed some last night that didn't have any ABs. I think I may have put ABs in two of them. One of them I put a singular AB in it. It was the picture of, I think it was the whale, might have been the whale. Um, while I could have given the whale an, an AB belly, uh, the white belly could have been in AB. I felt like it wasn't the best look for a whale. So I decided to just give their eye a little bit of AB sparkle uh, and did the rest in the standard colours. And then I think for another one, I think I decided last minute to sort of pop a little bit of green in some of the like seaweedy stuff that was on the image but I haven't used loads on my ocean set I am being rather picky uh, and I am thinking about the animal as to whether it is something that deserves or needs or will benefit from the extra little bit of sparkle or not there are some sets that definitely benefit from it more the flowers set looks really nice with extra little AB sparkles and the Christmas set looked quite good with extra AB sparkles, but not all of them. Uh, it doesn't suit all the sets. So, yeah, it's kind of nice picking and choosing which ones to give sparkle. 
Lady Dax says, yes, she did have her bacon butty with HP sauce. She said it was lovely. <laughs> Good. So glad that you got it. Uh, she said the no meat thing is a trial to see if she can get a diagnosis for a thing called CPT2. Uh, she was told she had uh, thymomyelia, I think that's how you say it, uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, but a lot of her symptoms are not really typical of that. Um, P. Jelly saw a programme and did some research uh, and said that she could fit this CPT2, which is a lack of enzyme that processes animal fats. Um, so we put, so they put her on a veggie diet. P. Jelly and herself decided to put her on a veggie diet uh, and it helped a lot. Ah, she said, but she does still cheat every now and then. It isn't the same when you're told you can't. It really isn't. Uh, she said that she just wishes that they would do the genetic testing for it here in the UK. There are many things that are covered by the NHS, but there are some things that just aren't. Um, would be interesting to know if you could get genetic testing for it somewhere else or hopefully like for a reasonable price for private because sometimes it's just knowing isn't it if you know it's that then you know you can go okay it's that and if I decide to keep eating animal fat then I will suffer but at least you know what choices you have or don't have um, sometimes it's the not knowing because sometimes something can help and you think it's the not eating animal fat, but it actually could be something completely different. It'd be so much easier if there was just tests for many things to just go, yep, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And this is what you need to do. Make life so much easier, would it not? <coughs> uh, Kim, she says, hello again. She says, uh, when you mentioned having lemma, lemon, and sugar on your pancake she says it surprised her she says she's never heard of that she says do you squeeze fresh lemon onto the pancake and sprinkle sugar over that uh, she said it's not a common practice here in indiana uh, she says but she does continue to enjoy hearing the differences between the us and the uk she says thank you for the waffle about the pancakes. Oh, it's making me want pancakes now, even though they're not good for me because I do have an intolerance to eggs. So uh, while I can have some things and I do occasionally have things like pancakes, I sometimes pay for it later. Um, but yeah, it's, it's lemon juice. So you can either get the lemon juice in um, a bottle um, or, or in a shape of a lemon. Uh, there is a manufacturer that does uh, a shape of a lemon that is full of lemon juice or you can just squeeze lemon juice over so yeah lemon juice sprinkle of sugar on a pancake best thing ever absolutely amazing and I love it I love it I love it I love it uh, and yes that is one thing I miss but it's not the American style pancakes so it's not you can do it on them but it's not the same it's not those thick pancakes um the thick thicker stodgy ones this is the thin ones that are um more thin ones that are what eggs flour isn't there something else in it there's got to be more than eggs and flour and i can't think what else is it? milk i think Oh my goodness me, what is in a pancake? Okay, so it is flour, eggs and milk. Yeah, it is. Milk, egg and flowers. Okay, 
I'm not going that loopy. I haven't made pancakes in ages. My daughter loves to make them. But as I say, egg doesn't agree with me. I have an intolerance to it. So um, I don't tend to make them. But when my daughter does, I may sneak one in. Um, but yeah, it is. You will see it in every shop in the UK around Shrove Tuesday uh, and Pancake Day. Uh, which is based on when people used to only have like basic ingredients or would used to use basic ingredients. Um, in fact, that's Pancake Day. Pancake Day in the UK. Oh. Okay, here we go. So uh, the next one is the 13th of February um in the uk uh, it is shrove tuesday so the basis behind pancake day or shrove tuesday or the reason it's called pancake day as well as being called shrove tuesday uh, it was the last chance for a spot of indulgence uh, before 40 days of fasting uh, for Lent. It was also um, the opportunity to use up food that would not last during Lent. So use up food that couldn't be eaten during Lent uh, but also wouldn't last until Lent was over. So that's why it became pancakes which is eggs, fat and milk. Um, they were made into pancakes and eaten on that day. So you will find lemon, sugar, pancake mix everywhere in stores. <laughs> Even your local corner shop will have your pancake mix for when the kids come home from school and go, it's pancake day and you go, oh my goodness, is it? I've not got anything in, nip to the corner shop. You'll find all you need to make the kids happy. Uh, so, yeah, it's more of a, a thin, thinner pancake. It's not the big, thick American style pancakes, though they are amazing. And I love those with maple syrup. Uh, but the thin pancakes, lemon, sugar, roll them up, eat them up. Absolutely delightful. Um, OK, Crafty Gamer Lass says they have a few questions. They said, what is HP sauce? Uh, so HP Sauce is a brand of brown sauce. Uh, it's a brand in the UK, the most well-known brand for brown sauce. And it is just delightful. Hopefully you have brown sauce where you are. If you do, put it with your bacon and your sausage. Uh, she also says, what does A&E stand for? Um, is that the emergency room? So yes, A&E is accident and emergency. So that tends to be what it's for. So if you've broken your arm, for example, fell and broken your arm and had an accident, you would go to A&E rather than your GP. Uh, A&E tends to be based at the hospital, so they have the ability to scan it, put it in plaster, all the rest of it. Um, the general doctors don't have those sorts of facilities. Um, they don't particularly have the facilities to stitch you up either, if you manage to cut yourself. Um, and then, of course, if you have an emergency, breathing problems, heart attack, anything like that, then you would go to A&E. So, yeah, it stands for accident and emergency. Um, she says also what does RTC uh, mean in relation to a vehicle accident uh, so I think that's road traffic collision is an RTC a road traffic collision is an RTC so many acronyms for everything isn't there so many shortened versions and sometimes quite a few that can mean quite a few different things uh, and some of those different things depend on what generation you are <laughs> as to what they mean. It's a confusing life. It's a confusing life. Uh, she said, also, no need to apologise for the shorter whip and waffle, because I did have a rather short one last week. Uh, she said, you are providing awesome things for us diamond painters and deserve a break to just be Rebecca. 
Oh, thank you. I do wish the shorter one last week was due to that reason. Uh, but no, I was busy packing orders. Though, to be fair, I love packing orders kind of as much as I love doing a whip and waffle. I love packing orders up and knowing that people are going to love them on the other side uh, when, when they get to their new homes. Um, but yeah, we had a rather busy launch last last month uh, we have been we seem to have found some sort of nice level of numbers now where things don't necessarily sell out straight away um, but we also have more products so we often find um, yeah numbers numbers are rising uh, and they're not all people ordering just stuff from launch in general orders are rising as well so in turn it's yeah they're just there's just more and more orders every launch which is just making us busier um but that's fine because you know we plan around that a lot and stuff but after september launch uh, because september is running into october and november um, and advent should all be packed and out on their way um, and then packed and ready to go out if anybody orders one during that time it's things should be a lot calmer and that's when I'll get my me time or a bit more me time uh, I do try to shut off at a certain time each day which doesn't always work it's now 25 past six on Saturday evening uh, but I say I'm loving this whip and waffle and I'm determined to get through these questions and comments so that I'm up to date and I'm enjoying getting some more of this diamond painting done so you stuck with me for a bit longer. Um, Jeanette uh, says bonjour Rebecca she says on the topic of the advent calendar she said if she receives hers for her birthday in September, does that mean she can open it? She says, just kidding. Um, she won't. She'll resist the temptation. There is part of me that would like to say yes. And there's another part of me that would like to say, bear this in mind. If you do open it for your birthday in September, which you're perfectly entitled to, if it is a gift for your birthday in September. Um, will it be as exciting if you can't brag on YouTube or social media about what you've got with fellow diamond painters because you need to keep it a secret for them? And will it be as exciting having it all on one day and not on 24 different days with, you know, discussions allowed around it? Um... But yeah, there were a few people that did open theirs early last year. Uh, it was nice to have the feedback that they enjoyed them. Um, and they were absolutely fantastic at keeping stum. Um, and keeping it all as a surprise for everybody else that had yet to open theirs. So I'd advise keeping it. I think you will get a lot more enjoyment out of it in December. Uh Oh, they have an earth design comments. Oh, have I actually got... Oh, I have. There was not as many comments left last week. Probably because it was a lot shorter. And I don't know how much... Um, how much I waffled on about random stuff. I can imagine there can be a bit more topic topics for next week following today's discussion. Oh, let's see. This is the kind of day I'm having, but I'm also having such a fun day. Just drop my pen on top of my tray. Um, but I am also having such a fun day whip and waffling, knowing it's a long one, not minding that it's a long one, uh, enjoying coming back in and chatting and diamond painting, uh, and enjoying leaving Hobby to be creative. Uh, and seeing what he's created each time I come back out of doing the whip and waffle 
that I refuse to let the fact that I keep dropping stuff and spilling diamonds everywhere ruin any of that day. But I think I've got all of those. Yeah. So yeah, quite a big section was uncovered today, but not a full section completed. Up, up to there is solid, but up to there there's quite a bit done, but there's also quite a few gaps to fill in. Um, but I have... I'm pretty sure I've got through all the whip and waffle comments. I'm just going to have a refresh of YouTube and just confirm that I have only got Heaven and Earth Design comments left, um, which I might do. Um, I might do that in the next couple of days as well, so that I can busy myself with September preparations next week. But yes, I have got to all the comments. Uh, I have actually only left one comment on there, which is Jessica who suggested to make a Facebook post so that you can all comment as to where you've hidden your advents. Um, and I've just left that there so that I can put that post up on Facebook <laughs> because I think it's an awesome idea. Uh, but anyway, I am going to leave it there for today. I have no idea how long this one is going to be. I just know it's going to be long. Um, but I'm going to go and get that edited and uploaded for you. Um, and check out what videos I need to film tomorrow. But while it's uploading, I think I'm just going to go and take this and sit in front of the TV with creative hubby and finish off at least this section if not more i'll see how long it takes me it might actually take me a while because it's quite a big section to be fair but anyway thank you all so much for watching listening to me waffle on today and i will speak to you all again soon